Right, okay, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? It is Alex from AB Fitness once again. I'm kind of in a different environment here. I'm down in the in the front room with my trusted computer here. As you can see, we're uploading, oh shit, I missed. As you can see, we're uploading this with video. It's the one that you've probably already gone through and seen. I'm filming this the exact same day because I'm productive as fuck. I'm joking, I'm really not. Right, so, uh, let's get into the commentary. This here is what I was talking about in my last video. This is going to be the top five nutrition bodybuilding myths in the industry, or what I've heard anyway. So, relax, because I'm going to certainly do so. Put my feet up. Um, and let's quickly go through these uh, myths. By the way, do you like my slippers? They're like, I've had them since Christmas. They're actually my brother's, but they fit me, and he doesn't use them, so win-win. Right, let's start off with, first off here, I've got everything on my trusty Microsoft Word, and I'm ready to fucking rock and roll. Shut the fuck up, Alex, you nerd. First out of five, creatine is a steroid, or creatine will increase lean muscle mass, whichever one you want to use. Creatine, it, as I mentioned in my previous Creatine 101 video, Creatine is far from a steroid. What creatine does is it basically, it doesn't increase testosterone levels or hormonal levels or it doesn't play with any form of hormone that your body produces, which is the purpose of an anabolic steroid. The only thing it does do is give your body energy to provide, uh, by providing creatine molecules for the ATP CP system to use as energy. Another thing that creatine does is that it binds itself to the muscles and it absorbs water. What this means is as the muscles have got more water, it means that they will appear more big, they'll appear more buffed up, they'll appear better. So, this, yeah, as, as I said, they absorb water, thus making the muscle look fuller and bigger. This does not mean that they gain lean muscle mass. This just means that they're a little bit bigger. If, let's say, you had a balloon, you had it underwater, and you pumped in more air, you wouldn't actually increase the amount of balloon in the balloon. You'd increase the amount of air in the balloon, thus making it bigger. That is a similar concept. Think of your muscle as the balloon and water as the air. Your muscle doesn't... It, it's not lean muscle mass. The same amount of mass is still there, but it's just more inflated. Night eating slash carbs after 8 o'clock will make you fat. This is bullshit. This is good old 100% bullshit. Um, to, give, to put it into perspective, there were these two people, Amber Kinsey and Michael Ormsby, had a, conducted a study called the health of the, the... The health impact of nighttime eating. Old and new perspectives. So, old perspectives for nighttime eating have been primarily based on population of shift workers, night eating syndrome patient, and epidemiological data that suggests that the consumption of large mixed meals combined with irregular sleep patterns increases the susceptibility to weight gain, obesity, and cardiometabolic diseases. Cardiometabolic diseases being um, the answer is in the word, but they are diseases that are linked to the cardiovascular and metabolic system. In recent years, data from healthy men has shown that consuming small, aka about 150 calories, protein-rich beverages appears to improve overnight muscle protein synthesis, morning metabolism, and satiety. I don't know what that means, don't ask. However, the healthy... In health, the impact on healthy women has not been studied yet. In obese women, however, eating before sleep has shown to improve morning appetite, but also increase insulin resistance. However, uh, the addition of exercise training for four weeks appears to eliminate any adverse effect of nighttime feeding in this population and has shown to improve some indicators of cardiovascular health. In other diseased population, 
for example, GC, uh, GSD and TID and T1DM. Eating before bed is actually required for survival. Management with individually tailored nighttime feeding protocols may optimize their clinical outcomes. So, let me just quickly um, give you guys the more action, the, the real reason why uh, night eating after or eating after X o'clock does not make you fat. If I really quickly pull up my calculator here for just one second, so where, where the fuck is my calculator? There we go. So, normally a normal person, an average human being, uh, will burn about 0.42 calories for every pound of body weight in one hour of sleep. For instance, someone who's 150 pounds will burn 63 calories in one hour. So let's say me, right? I'm about a 78 kilo guy. If you're 78 kilo, if you if you if you know your weight in kilos, that's fine. Just times your kilos by by 2.2. That should give you a rough estimation in pounds. And then after that, let's time that by 0.42 for hours of sleep. And then times that by, I'd say I get around seven and a half hours of sleep on a good night. So, in one single night, I would have burnt 540 calories. So, 540 calories in one night. That's pretty much, that's give or take a sixth of my TDEE. So, I would have spent a sixth of my total daily energy expenditure in my sleep of seven and a half hours. Now, second myth. Anabolic window. There is a myth that apparently after you work out, there's about half an hour to an hour window where your body is reaching its peak in muscle protein synthesis and you have to feed it in order to get your gains. If you do not do that, then you will lose your gains and that hour or two hours that you spent in the gym will have been for nothing. This is a myth as there is no certainty in terms of anabolic benefit to consuming food straight after workout. Yes, okay, insulin levels are high, and yes, muscle, pro muscle protein synthesis is at its peak, but there are no studies to show that there is a benefit in consuming a meal straight after a workout. Once again, there is an article that I linked in my previous video called Exercise Protein Metabolism and Muscle Growth, um, and it states, and I quote, the response of muscle protein metabolism to a resistance exercise bout lasts 28 to 48 hours. Thus, the interaction between protein metabolism and any meals consumed in this period will determine the impact of diet and muscle hypertrophy. 28 to 48 hours. So, it's not a matter between one hour or two hours. It's a matter between 24 to 48. Obviously, I'd say don't take it that far, but... I'd say anywhere between, if you get a pro, if you get a high protein good meal, give or take about five hours, maybe latest ten hours after a workout, you should be fine. Right, carbs are bad. No, no, no. I'm joking. Whoever says that carbs are bad deserves a high five. In the face. With a chair. A steel chair with 50,000 volts running straight through it. Whoever says that is a fucking idiot. Carbs are not bad. This myth originated from people who only took bad carbs as carbs into consideration. So, bad carbs are simple carbs. Things such as pasta, white bread, rice, white rice, um, and pastries. Everyone loves some pastries. So, anyone who knows what they're talking about, who knows nutrition, who knows something in terms of nutrition and fitness, will tell you that carbs are actually incredibly important for someone's diet. Without carbs, you pretty much can't function. Carbs are the main source, are the primary source of energy in any human being. Complex carbs specifically are the best. What are complex carbs? Sweet potatoes, uh, brown rice, Brown, wholemeal bread. Um, they're the best source of energy and will make you feeling full. Complex, uh, complex carbs are also high in starch and fiber. And fiber also helps you regulate your times of the day. 
I don't know. It's it makes it less. It makes you more reliable. It makes you shit better, okay? It regulates your shit times. Your shits are now countable and okay in terms of when you're gonna go. It's carbs are the fundamental part of anyone's diet. Finally, following a diet is the best way to help you lose weight. Okay, so this is kind of one that I threw in there myself, right? So following a diet is not actually that bad. But a diet is something that actually has an end. So in terms of actually achieving your results, yeah, sure, diets are fucking great. They actually make you feel, they actually help you lose weight in a certain amount of time. But Weight Watchers and all that is good in terms of actually achieving your goals, but what happens in terms of goals over time? Because after that, after you finish Weight Watchers, you finally hit 100 pounds, you're not going to actually touch that diet again until you're obese or overweight. Like, they're not, what's the word, sustainable. They're not sustainable over time. Do you want to know why? Because Weight Watchers and whatever, I've never used them before in my life. I don't care what diet you use, but listen to me right now. As soon as that diet finishes, you won't know how the fuck to count calories or track macros or do anything that will benefit your body and your body goals in any way, shape or form. And I'm sorry if that offended anyone, but you've got to fucking listen to it and you've got to understand something. Weight Watchers and whatever bullshit works on a little point scale that you're only allowed something within certain points in a day, that is not good. What you need to do is you need to take your TDE, your total daily energy expenditure, go to IFFY, um, I, IAFYM, if it fits your macros, go onto their site, calculate your TDE, and it will, give, it will give you how many calories you spend in a day, and what you should do in order for your TDE, your being the key word, it's a little bit more personalized than Weight Watchers and whatnot. If I'm gonna be honest, the best way to fix your nutrition, or you know, and to do whatever you're doing is by tracking macros and try and by doing trial and error. I'm currently on th three thousand calories per day. Three thousand calories. Sorry, no, that's a lie. I'm currently on twenty eight hundred. Two thousand eight hundred calories. My TDE is three thousand calories. I need to eat three thousand just to stay maintenance. 2,800 is just for me to shred down a little bit, lose a little body fat for the summer. Look, bottom line is, diets are great. Diets are brilliant, but they're only good enough if you only want a short-term target. If you want a long-term target, if you want to be able to live a healthier lifestyle, not just have it for a few months, and when you've reached your appetite, when you've reached your little fucking weight goal, you just throw it away and run away like a little fucking princess use flexible dieting. Not only that, it actually helps you eat, like I, I eat pizzas and I'm currently on a, on a nutrition plan. I eat pizzas and I'm currently on a plan. Let me rephrase that. Let me repeat that, sorry. I eat pizzas and burgers and pretzels and bagels and whatever the fuck you want. I eat curries, I eat pizzas, I eat burgers, I eat like pulled pork baguettes, I, any fat, any fatty kind of shit that you can think of, I, I can eat McDonald's and I'll lose weight, alright? Flexible dieting is the easiest and most enjoyable way I can eat, after I've eaten a pizza and a burger, I can go and have a brownie for all I care and I can still be within my daily macros, all my daily calories and I can still lose weight and I can still look good. I don't exactly always look good, but you get the point. So, if you want that kind of stuff, then please do not follow diets. They're good for short term, that's all I'm going to say. Weight Watchers and everything, they're good for short term. I'm going to repeat that, I'm going to preach that until the end of the fucking universe. They're only good for long term. If you want something longer, for short term. If you want something long term, do your own nutrition plan get someone, get a professional to help you, uh, come into contact with me. I know a couple of nutritionists who are fucking great. They've actually got really good feedback. That's it, literally. Go to IIFYM, 
think it's iifym.com. I'm not sure. Let me quickly, yeah, go to iifym.com. Then after that, go on to calculators, T I I F Y M D T D E E calculator, and then just do that. It's easy as that, and then you you can see what you need. But, but anyway, you get the point. Diets are not good. Right, basically, to summarize, creatine is not a steroid. Night, night eating is perfectly fine. I do, I have two waffles, one with peanut butter, one with chocolate for spread before I go to sleep, and like three bourbons. It's fine. Anabolic window is kind of true, but it's only up to like, you know, 10 hours or whatever. Carbs are not bad, and following a diet is good to help you lose weight, but only in short term. Long term, do IIFYM, do flexible tithing, a lot easier.